Um, Shehaza, um, we have Khalid Thana next. And we are at one and a half hours. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. Thanks for taking my, my question. Um, yeah, so oftentimes when we try to complete a project or do good works, uh, when, we, when we fall short, we say uh, God didn't will it. When in reality, it's usually our flawed strategy. Uh, so I like uh, Thomas Clary, how you had brought up his way of thinking. He mentioned that people can't think about thinking of Islam. Mm -hmm. um, and this also kind of correlates to what Imam al-Ghazali mentioned too. Um, in one of his saying that that if Islam was presented in a distorted or a filtered way, right. that the person hearing the message is not held accountable. Mm -hmm. And in this modern day and age we're living, uh, when most people read the eyes of the Quran, they take it out of context. So when they read the eye of the Quran from Thomas Clare translation, God has sealed their hearts and their hearing and their seeing are covered over and theirs is a horrendous torment for them. Um, this type of mentality pre prevents people from um, they pretty, pretty much oversimplify things. So how do we go about um, to take a more critical look at our actions so we can better discern what is truly out of our control and what we can do to prove upon that? So that's my uh, question to you. Yeah, well, I mean, you made some good comments too, because I think, um, I think there's a lot of truth to that, that we tend to blame our incompetencies on God, you know, so we, we don't plan properly, we don't strategize, we don't do things. So the Prophet ﷺ was very deliberate, and he loved deliberation, and he said there's two qualities, one of the Sahabi said you have two qualities that God loves, um, you know, and one of them was to end me, which is deliberation, to, you know, to, 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 to really, um, to think about what you're doing and deliver, you know, the, the word, the word in English comes from a Latin word out of freedom, you know, delibere, like to actually be free to think without the obstacles um, that often uh, people get caught up in. Um, so, so, rawiya uh, is a really important quality, you know, this idea of is to, to take one's time and to, to think about things. And so I think, you know, Muslims, we tend not, not to, um, to strategize. We're a very reactionary community. Like a, a lot of, you know, the Prophet said, whoever fights under a blind flag and dies, dies a jahili death. And a lot of these so-called movements out there, we don't know who's controlling them. We don't know who's manipulating. I mean, we had this whole movement in the United States that the moment Trump was out of office, it just disappeared. I mean, it was amazing. There were protests everywhere. There were riots. There were all this, and all this, all these, who made all those banners? Like where, who paid for all that? Where, and, and this, the moment Trump got elected, it, uh, uh, Biden got elected, it was over. The great movement was just gone. It's just amazing. And, and that, I mean, there's just so many things like that now where you just, people are so manipulated, you know, and these are psy psychological operations. I mean, these are psyops. That's what they are. And Dr. Cleary was very, very concerned about that. And a lot of what he wrote was to help people to, to see through um, psychological operations. Because they're out, and the biggest one is Iblis. I mean, he's just the the demonic psyop is the real one. That's the one you have to worry about. So, so I think it's really important just to to be very careful and cautious about what group. You know, groups are very problematic today. You know, just generally, I mean, we should just we're Muslims. Like that's our group. And then try to be as broad-based. I mean, we have parameters like, you know, there's things definitely beyond the pale. But trying to be as broad-based as possible and recognizing it's a dark time and it's difficult. People are having a hard time just being Muslim, just holding on to your faith. You know, we have people really struggling out there. And, the, and uh, this is not a time of where harshness is really useful. Um, I mean, harsh with the violent. Absolutely. Um, people that are 
but a lot of people are just really struggling out there and suffering. And so I think it's really important just to, you know, to have more compassion with, uh, with just the average Muslim getting through the day. Right. Cause this, the dunya has gotten to be a very difficult place. I mean, Fatima radiallahu anha, the prophet came in and she was kind of tatham raha. She was like making, um, uh, you know, like grinding the, the, the corn barley probably and um the prophet looked at her and she was wearing a very coarse um cloth from camel hair and he just looked at her and he said don't just bear the bitterness of the dunya uh in 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 in, in waiting for the the bliss of of the of the next world you know, in other words, that that this is dunya, this is dunya, and we're not here that long. We really aren't. So, I mean, I, you know, and I'm saying that as somebody in my seventh decade. You know, it goes fast, and you, we're out of here soon enough. And and the problems are going to stay the same. I the, a few, you know, I was reading the, the other day uh, a whole section on Raghav Ispahani on homosexuality, and he really had a large section on it. And you know, I was just these are the same problems. It's just human problems. He was writing a thousand years ago about the homosexuals in Iraq, you know, and, and th some of them were public, you know, they like, they were known uh, to be that way. So th these are things that have just always been around, same human problems. Um, the, the difference today, I think, more than any other time is the technology. So the technology has introduced something that really changes the, I mean, these kids are all getting addicted to this stuff. I was talking to uh, my sister yesterday and she was talking about how, what a hard time she had with her grandchild who she babysits of just, he's, you know, he's 11 years old of just keep, keep him off these machines and they're addictive and they were designed to be addictive. And what's interesting is the CEOs of the companies that produce them, they don't let their kids near those things. They all go to Montessori schools. They don't have technology. Steve Jobs never let his children touch an iPad because they know, they read all the studies, right? I mean, it's amazing. Myopia is becoming a global crisis, short-sightedness, because people are looking at screens all the time. So when you're young, you actually need, you know, one of the things children do when they go outside, at least we did when we were kids, is you just lie on the grass and look up at the sky and watch the clouds go by. I mean, how many times did you do that as a child? And apparently that's actually necessary for the development of the retina uh, of the eyes so that you actually have farsightedness. So because kids aren't doing things like that anymore, they're in the early stages of eye development, you need blue, the color blue. It's literally blue is, is you need that color. And so because kids aren't getting that anymore, they're, they're all short-sighted. There's this documentary, I'm not making this up. But, you know, so, so you know, we, we have to find ways, you know, we need to create communities where people are committed to raising their children together. Um, you know, I mean, it's, not necessarily the Amish, but even people like what they're trying to do in places, um, Allentown, which I suggested they run for mayor and so, and then change it to Allah town. <laughs> you know, like uh, Allah, Allahabad in India. Yeah, they did that. They put names like, just, Ahmedabad. yeah, Ahmedabad, you know, exchange to Allah town. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't even have to change very much. Um, yeah. So and change all the city, the street signs and everything, you know, like Ihsan Way, <laughs> Iman Road. Um, but you know they're trying to do that. There's people that are trying to do that. But I think it's important. Um, I mean, one of my really hopes is to get as many homes and things. I mean, we're in an expensive area, so it's not easy. But just to create community where people are praying together. They come together. Somebody was telling me yesterday, a very wonderful lady from Texas who's been a supporter of Zaytuna, but she was telling me how distraught she was about, uh, not distraught, but she was just saying that, you know, there was a lot of mosques being built in Dallas. And 
you know, I say, well, a lot, you know, for me, that's a positive thing <laughs> because uh, the Prophet I said, there were over 40 mosques in Medina at the time the Prophet was there. Like people forget that. that I, and I learned that from Sheikh Abdullah al-Qadi. So the Prophet wanted a mosque in every neighborhood so that the people would go and you create community and then they look after each other. Hey, so-and-so so wasn't here for maybe he's not well. You know, and then they would go and see and check up on them. Um, and that and that's real community. Uh, so, so, but then she pointed out that it's more people want to pray with their own group, which is another problem. So that's that's not a solution. That's sectarianism. So um, anyway, those are some thoughts. <laughs>